Welcome to A Teaspoon of Healing, where we explore the pathways to wellness and vibrant living. Listen to personal stories of healing and interviews with experts. It's time to open a doorway to healing in your life through positive changes. Here is your host, Dawn Damari. Hi, I'm Dawn Damari, and you're listening to another episode of A Teaspoon of Healing. Well, today's topic is how to stay healthy with surfing and a little bit about the restaurant business. My guest, Sal Avila, is the owner of the Lake Forest and Foothill Ranch locations of Avila's El Ranchito Restaurant. It's a restaurant chain based in Orange County, California, and he is also an avid surfer. He's going to talk about how he started the restaurant, some tips for those of you who want to open up a restaurant of your own, and how to stay healthy with surfing if you're new to it. Or if you're already a surfer and want some tips from a veteran, check it out. Sal has an amazing history and you will learn a lot. This podcast is for informational purposes only and does not constitute medical advice. Please consult a physician or other health professional before undertaking changes in lifestyle or wellness habits. The author claims no responsibility to any person or entity for any liability, loss, or damage caused or alleged to be caused directly or indirectly as a result of use, application, or interpretation of the information presented herein. And before we get into our interview, let's hear from one of our sponsors, Goff Tours. Hi, this is Goff, owner of Goff Tours, specializing in stand-up paddle boarding or surfing lessons. I even do snorkeling. You can reach me here. Orange County has what you're looking for. You can contact me via email at gofftours at gmail.com or mobile number is 949-338-5937, gofftours.com. Today, my guest is Sal Avila, the owner of the Lake Forest and Foothill Ranch, California, locations of Avila's El Ranchito Restaurants. Hi, Sal. Hi, Don. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing fine. Well, thanks for Cheers. joining me today on the podcast. Oh, it's my pleasure. So, you're a member of the Avila family, and the Avila family owns several restaurants in Southern California. So, how did you get started? And finding out that you wanted to do this? Well, my parents have brought us up, all of us, in, especially my father, brought us up in business-wise. Okay. Uh, so we learned business since we were little teeny kids. We would sell lemons. We had a lemon tree, and we would go and sell lemons. We were that type of a mentality. And then, so when my, once my father started the business, the restaurant business, of course, all of us wanted to do that. And my brother, Joe, and I, we wanted to do that, but we wanted to go surfing too at the same time. <laughs> so we decided that we were going to go to Hawaii back in 69 or 70 mm -hmm. and go to Hawaii and open up a, a restaurant business there to go surfing and work at the same time. Oh, nice. And your family came here from Mexico. What, what city in Mexico? They come from the city of Guanajuato. Okay. But the little city, the little town is called Penjamo. Oh, okay. Guanajuato. And, and then they came here... Now, were you also born there, or were you... I was born there. Oh, okay. And do you visit often? I was visiting there for a while, because I have relatives there. Okay. And I have uh, I have cousins that I love dearly, and uh, some of my cousins are, are, are still living there. Some are live, live in other places, so they all graduated, mm -hmm. and they live in different areas okay. of, uh, of, of, of Mexico. Oh, okay. Nice. And so your mother's recipes, I know that in the restaurants... Your mother's recipes, did she bring those actually from Mexico? Are those the recipes they're using in the restaurants? Yes. Oh, really? Oh, yes. My mother is a fantastic cook. And all my aunts are really good. But uh, also my grandfather and my grandmother helped my parents open up the restaurant. Oh, really? And so my, when I was a little boy, I, I used to see, the, see my grandfather washing dishes. And then I'll see my grandmother helping my mom guide her. And my mom will be, be going through the whole, all the recipes. Oh, okay. So you use these recipes still in the restaurants. And so these are ones she developed there. And, of course, you keep them a secret. Yes. They're good. So, and now the first Avila's El Ranchito restaurant was founded in Huntington Park in 1966. So did you work there at all in yes. the restaurant? Okay. As a matter of fact, what happens when they first open it, 
It used to be a Cuban restaurant. Okay. One of the relatives owned it, and they decided they didn't want to be in the, in the Cuban restaurant business anymore. I it was see. a small little restaurant. And so my father, uh, one of my uncles says, is my father wanted me to take it over. Right. And my father says, well, I need to come out with $10,000 to open up the restaurant. And so my uncle lent him the $10,000 so he can open, open up the restaurant. And so that's how we got started okay. in the beginning. And I think the first day they, they opened up, my mom said she sold $12, $6 in the morning, $6 in the right. afternoon. But from that, it all came, it all happened. It just started rolling, rolling. Nice. And so there's a very successful business they have now. Now they own all the property there. Oh, okay. And the restaurant's one, it's one of the biggest restaurants that we have. And and it, it's just been, it's been successful since she opened it. Wow. Opened it up. And so each of the, so a lot of the family members, so your brothers, sisters, or, or other family members they either had or have restaurants, locations of their own, so they, you keep it within the family. Yes. What happens, we we keep it within the family. All of my, my nephews, they all work in the restaurant business. So okay. my, my sons, my kids, they all work in, in the restaurant business. Okay. And normally, they, that's why we have 13. Pretty soon, we're going to have like 20 or something. <laughs> because they're all anxious to, to, to get involved in, in, in the business. Oh, okay. Uh, a lot of them have graduated from school. They've gone to, a lot of them has gone to uh, San Diego State. Mm -hmm. And uh, different, and to bring graduate from from from, uh, from school, but when they come back, they realize the flexibility, mm -hmm. and and the ability to use their knowledge of, of uh, when they went to school, and use it in the restaurant business. So they decided it's better to open up a restaurant business than right. follow their own career. Nice. And so, when did you decide that you wanted to operate these two locations, and which one was first? About 21 years ago, my brother goes, look, there's a Taco Bell. There's a Taco Bell right here on Muirlands. And uh, I came by, looked at it, and I saw this little tiny restaurant. But my vision, I already envisioned myself putting this restaurant together. Mm -hmm. So back then, I decided to open that up. Once that's been going about three years ago, I decided to open, uh, open up Foothill Ranch. And so now we really get really busy yes. here in Foothill Ranch is also getting really busy. Yes, so you operate these, and a lot of your employees have been with you for a long time. Is that correct? Well, well I think that's a blessing to us, uh, not only to me, but to my parents and every one of our, of our brothers, because some of the employees, for example, you have Martha has been with us since she was like over, over 50, almost 50 years. Wow. And Bernardo has been with us for, he's, he's the main chef, he's been yeah. with us for over 35 years. Wow. When he would, within the family, cooks, when we open a restaurant, right? we, we share them with uh, new restaurants. So you are a surfer and very avid surfer. So how long have you been surfing? When did, when did you start? I, was, I went to, when I first started in, in the 10th grade, I was like 15 okay. years old. Okay. And I started going to Hunter Park High School. And then I started seeing how the surfers were uh, it was a guy named Rick Lenders who would invite me over his home and he will put ahead a surfboard mm -hmm. and he will put in there and he run and jump on the board and pretend like he was surfing. Right. And so I did, we all did that and it seemed like a lot of fun and that's what got me started okay. going surfing. And I said, well, I like to do this. And so we will go to the beach. Mm -hmm. The parents, Rodney Abbott, he was another one of my schoolmates, his mother would take us to the beach every weekend and that's how I started surfing. Oh, nice. So you consider that that's a good age to learn when yes. you're young. Now, if you're yeah. older and you want to learn to surf, can you still, oh, is you, there still a chance? You can surf any, any, any time, any age, as long as you pay attention to someone who already knows. Because 80% right. has been, 80% of surfing is, is really no, knowing the ocean mm -hmm. and, and, and being in shape paddling. Right. Because uh, you get, get a wave, doesn't take that long to ride a wave. Right. But to paddle around and put yourself in the right position, that's what makes it hard. Yes. How do you feel that surfing has enhanced your health and kept you healthy? Well, I think that a lot of it, a lot of times, you know, being in the restaurant business is very stressful. Right. Uh, there's a lot of problems in the restaurant business or with any kind of problems that I've had, emotional problems that I had. Right. And surfing has saved my life a lot of times because I will either go to Mexico and go surfing for a week and, and, 
and just paddling out and get myself totally away from everything, that has really tremendously helped me and stress. Yes. And it's healthy being in the ocean. Right. Being around there and, and around people that have the same view that you do. What are your most memorable surfing trips that you've been on? Different parts of the world surfing. I belong, well, I used to belong to the Mexican surf team, so I represent oh, really? Mexico for the, oh, for, the, for the world contest in Hawaii. Oh, really? So wait, how long did you do this? I've done it for probably five years. Oh, okay. So you were you were representing them, and you was, there was a contest in Hawaii. Exactly. I was one of the best. Well, nice. they, they have different different categories. I had short boards and long boards. Right. And I was one of the top long boarders in Mexico. Oh, nice. And so I will represent Mexico wherever I've gone, and and also in in, in the nationals we will have a different parts in Mexico. Okay. And then the world contest, I represent Mexico. Nice. But the most memorable times that I, and the best ways that I serve is, is, is in Indonesia. An island there, it was called, an island that had a wave called Desert Point. Okay. That wave was so good. And you still remember it. Oh, I still remember it. <laughs> Perfect wave. And then there's, and there's another island near the Caroline Islands. There's a, a wave in Sipanapit or called Pea Pass. Okay. And that wave there is tremendously, it's called Panape. It's okay. really, I end up in the hospital, but... Oh, no! But I, but I, <laughs> oh, I no. love the wave. Why did it get, get you in the hospital? What happened? Nobody wanted to go out because it was really big. Right. And the wave is tremendously, it's dangerous because you're in the middle of the ocean. Okay, You take a right. boat, it takes right. you half an hour to go into the ocean to surf the reefs. Okay, yikes. So I was just there almost by myself. There was another guy just pedaling around there with me. But then I just took off on this wave for some reason the fin slipped and I went from all the way to the top and I hit the reef. Oh and then no. The reef took, hit my elbow, yeah. and my elbow came out. Um, my whole back was all, it was all scratched and oh no. It was all white meat with, 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 with the coral on, on the back. And then I had to, I had to go through, through the reef because it was lower tide. I grabbed my board for one arm because I couldn't use the other. I came across walking and, and, and fortunate that it was lower tide, so the waves were f breaking further. And I got through the channel of the reef and pedaled with one arm to the boat. And then somehow my arm snapped back to its place. And then they pulled me up and and they says, we're taking you to the hospital. Oh, wow. So I was there and they're really nice people. The, right. The hospital, the hospitals grabbed me and there were two, a doctor from the Philippines, one from India. And they took all the all, all the all the coral off yeah, my back. Yes, gave me antibiotics, cleaned me all out with iodine, make sure that the coral didn't grow back, and so scraped me for a long time, at least two hours. Now I have to uh, pay this bill, <laughs> and I says the lady, this little lady sitting there, and uh, she goes, well, it will be eight dollars for you today. Oh wow! So I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I said I'm gonna be back, but they knew that I'll go back surfing because I had, right. I just had all scratch on my whole body, so I just they were really nice. Oh, it sounds it, and you're all healed. Of I'm healed. And, um, I still have scars, but <laughs> have memories. That's the most memorable. That's the most that's memorable. That one in, in Indonesia. Indonesia. Now, as a way to stay physically fit, so you recommend surfing to people? I, I definitely. To me, when I was a kid, box for Golden Gloves oh, for, I until know I was that. like 14. And I love that. Boxing. Uh -huh. okay. It is really good exercise. Boxing good is? Good physically for you. And, and then, don't you get hurt pretty easily? Yeah. <laughs> you get knocked important. out here and there. And uh, But that's one of the sports. But surfing is good for your whole body. Okay. And your arms, your legs, your breath. When, you, you're, when you're paddling, all that exercise. And you're doing it out of fun. You're enjoying what you're doing. So you don't even think of it to be an exercise. Right. Great. Well, now, so in health in general, so what advice do you have for men who want to stay healthy and fit? You know, maybe they're they're working long hours and, you know, they've got kids and it's it's hard to squeeze in the exercise. Or what do you recommend for them just to get off the couch and... Well, eat right, eat good food, healthy food, natural food, a lot of vegetables, yes. a lot of fruit, mm -hmm. and then go surfing. Yeah. To me, that's the most important thing I have. Surfboards all over the world. I have surfboards in Mexico. That I, I have a house in Mexico, and I have a house in Nicaragua. Nice. And I got surfboards there because that's the main thing. And, and I teach the children to surf oh, when I go there. Oh, in Nicaragua. So, 
in Nicaragua and Mexico. Oh, nice. And so some of the surfers that I thought right now in Mexico that become one of the best in the world. Really? Wow. So, and you agree age is just a number? You can yes. be fit? That's what I was talking to a, fr a friend of mine last night here at dinner, having dinner with him. He said about my age, and he said, the deal about it is that you kept surfing, but we stopped for a while for it. And only surf on the summertime on the, or the weekends. Right. And the idea with surfing is that you got you need to be consistent in surfing, either every weekend or two times, three times a week. Okay. In order for you to stay in shape. Right. Because otherwise it will be hard for you to, to, to stay away from it for a couple of weeks and then tr and try to get back into it. That will be right. too hard for you. Consistency. Consistency is the most important. And so that's the advice of to stay healthy throughout the years, maybe find a sport that you like to consistently do it. Consistently do it. And I think that, that sometimes your conscience and you start justifying the fact that, oh, I'm older, so I don't have to do that. But I, it's an excuse. Right. I think that, that you have to be real with yourself and tell yourself, I need to do, I need to get up the couch mm -hmm. and I need to get in my car and drive and pedal out. I don't right. care if I get a wave or not, but yes, pedal out. And this way, you're kind of having power over your body, right? And not the body over you, right? I agree. And so, you exercise often. Do you do other well, exercise besides surfing? Or well, maybe? like I said, it's it's uh, I taking yoga. Okay. I I uh, I really think stretching is one of the most important things okay. in any sport. Any right. sport. Okay. What I do now, I just, every place I go, I have a bag where I take my jump ropes, and and I can push-ups, pull-ups, mm -hmm. uh, sit-ups, I do all that I can to try to stay in shape. Okay. The jumping rope is one of the best. Really? Okay. Uh, part of it because of uh, staying in, trying to, to get yourself back in condition. Right. Probably the hardest, but it's like anything else, you know, you learn to crawl before you learn to walk. That's true. That's right. And then there's, it's the, gets your heart going. It's and your heart. It's good for your and heart. And the strength. It's good for your digestive system. And it's, I have a frame of a two by fours and then top of it I have a plywood and then I jump on top of it so it doesn't hurt my knees when I so you jumping around on the on, on cement. Instead of that I have a cushion with that. Oh okay. So, so I just And so boxing you don't do that anymore? No. No you you quit. I, I, I quit that. I think you know violent sports. It's not really I don't see it as violent but I see where people hurt each other. Right. And I'm not into that anymore. But I do do a lot of the exercise. I hit the bag. Do you have any advice for someone who wants to enter the restaurant business? Either open up a uh, restaurant or just thinking about it maybe in the planning stages it was very natural to be because my father's been in business right. since he was younger and it's natural to to know business and know how to proceed of what to do and not to do and, and he was very fortunate because I think uh, his location 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 means almost everything for everybody right my suggestions I did as I went to Orange Coast College for like three years mm -hmm. took classes for marketing advertising oh, okay, good. accounting then beer he is one of the top guys in, in, the, in the restaurant association, and he taught me well. He told me what to do, gave me consultations in the marketing part of it. It was very helpful to me. Yes. And so I think that a person should really have a knowledge, even though he's a, the person can be a really good chef or makes really good food, I think that he needs to expand his knowledge by going to, to take a few classes in school mm -hmm. that will aid him to make a better, a more successful business, like marketing make, and accounting, advertising. Yeah. Yeah, because not like ninety percent. Uh, I would say about ninety percent of the business go out of business. People That's that go into family heard. business go out of business within the first three years. Ninety percent within the first two to three years, yes. they will fail. And then I have my father, my mother, and you put fifty years in the business each that we right. can share the knowledge with each other. Right. Take classes, learn marketing, accounting. Finding a good location, yes, probably. Exactly, and, and, and take uh, and accounting in, um, in, the rest, in the restaurant business. Right. And also in, on portion control. Right. That's, that's really important that you take a class on that. Okay. And that's my suggestion for someone to To, to try started. to beat the odds. <laughs> that's right. Okay. You, have a, you said you have a home in Nicaragua and in Mexico. So how often do you visit uh, both of those places? Well, I'm, I'm planning to go down to Mexico this, this, next, this is next week I'm not. Okay. Uh, and stay there for a couple of days, surf. I like to stay at... And where do you surf usually in Mexico? I, it? It's a place called San Miguel. Okay. And there's a, I have a house there. Oh, nice. Right on the water. Wow. And so 
I can see the waves break in and I can see if it's crowded or not and it's got the consistency of it and that's why I like to go there and I, I've been going there since I was like when I first started surfing right. and so I known kids there since they were they were my age and now they're all grown old man and Nicaragua I've been going there for the past seven years I got a house that I built there and then I have some profit that I'm, I'm gonna build some condos oh, or wow. cabins and then I'm gonna, you know, it's gonna rent them out to surfers so where and is this in Nicaragua it, it's in the uh, county is called Tola okay and it's close to Costa Rica oh nice and uh, it's only about maybe a half an hour from Costa Rica okay and and what it is 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 there's so many good ways like Colorado's Pongas you have Santa Ana you have playgrounds all the surfing spots okay. and it's so full they're full of fish so you eat fish there all the time good oh, food really fresh seafood. a lot of roots because people there are really poor and and so they eat a lot of roots uh, from the ground uh, rice and pico de gallo and so you what do you find really special about the country it just really it i think the people there are, are really nice loving people mm -hmm. it's a family there that i love dearly it's like about 20 of them live close to each other oh, nice. uh, the children uh, they're like my little grandchildren a lot of the decor in both of your restaurants is from Nicaragua and from all of your surfing trips or is it mostly in Nicaragua no it's mostly my surfing trips okay but a, a lot of a lot of them like with like the whale bones and stuff I got them going down to Baja when I'm going down to Scorpion Bay and then we'll go through the desert for about 100 miles and there's villages in the desert near the ocean and we will trade whale bones for food Oh, okay. And, food, and so people, because people, they're far away from society, and it will cost them that much money of gas, and then they'll then they'll turn around and and give me the whale bone. But that's my vision too in the restaurant is that I wanted to make it unique, mm -hmm. and my daughters helped me too because Natalie graduated from the art classes here in Orange, in Orange County, and Mon Monica graduated from the Academy of Arts in San Francisco. Oh, okay. So she graduated from there. And, and so they know art and colors real well. And Natalie has helped me to paint. Uh, and all the paintings you see in my restaurant is my daughters who put them all together. Right. So it's all a family affair here. Yes, I can tell that. And so, yeah, so you're both of your daughters. So how many daughters do you have? I have two. Two, so they both work. They both work. work. They both work the restaurant. And both my grandson works with me. Okay. And my son, he, he was working with me, Seven. oldest one, Jeremy. And then I have Isaac, who's also a waiter, and mostly it's just my whole family works it. That's amazing. That's amazing. So, so the restaurants they're in they're in Lake Forest and Foothill Ranch, and in California. So I have people outside of California listening. So if they visit, they should check it out. And there's all different healthy options. So, do you have any more advice for people interested in staying healthy or opening up a restaurant? Well, one of the things about free and surfing is is uh, most people are afraid of shark the sharks going to get them i had a shark i had a shark uh a mako come right next to me oh, and <laughs> and and i was diving on myself so uh, what do you do? i mean uh, nobody was wanting to go surfing because it was lightning and thunder and it was in see what the and so what happens is so i go forget it i'm i'm sure lightning is going to hit me so i paddle out oh, wow. and when i'm sitting there surfing all of a sudden, this big old thing comes right next to me. So I said, okay, so put my feet on the board and pedal really slow, like a duck, you know, real mm -hmm. slow, and to shore. But this, this shark had no intentions of eating me. Right. Because we went surfing, he was there the next day, and we oh, went just surfing. Hanging out? <laughs> he was just hanging out, making sure we didn't eat his <laughs> food. Uh, I've been surfing in Costa Rica, at Punta Arenas, and my son and I are surfing there, and we've seen uh, crocodiles come right next to go picking up uh hard fishing i didn't get really afraid of them mm -hmm. but what i'm saying is is the fear people are afraid of try to do something because they assume something's going to happen right which is really 99 percent of them more than the 99.9 percent .9 is not going to happen or not know the not knowing the ocean because i think uh the most important things like anything else is before you build something, you read the instructions. Right. Well, before you were the ocean, you get to know the ocean. And so how, it's, how does somebody who doesn't know much, but they've just either moved to the beach or they just don't know the ocean well, how, how should they get to know the ocean better? Well, it's, first of all, you got to know your tides. Right. you got to talk to other people who know the ocean mm -hmm. and what it is they look at. And don't go out there, pedal out of the bigger waves. 
just pedal out and get to know the currents, where's a safe place to surf. And the ocean is there and it's gonna do what it's gonna do. Right. But you just gotta kinda dance with it, gonna flow with with the waves. Mm -hmm. And you learn to do that and eventually you get to know the ocean. You know you get to know even you're in a dangerous place, but at least you know what channels and where to go and, and also you know the reefs knowing exactly. which ones to go and so what about for example localism so if you move somewhere new and you or if, even when you're traveling and you want to surf somewhere the, the uh high degree surfing association right. is probably one of the oldest clubs in Huntington beach and we're kind of local guys me yeah. around there but always and even though it taught me that always respect mm -hmm. the ocean and respect the local people yes don't be aggressive Right. Don't try to think because you have the right to do something or gain something. You always got to be kind of be flexible and, and just kind of flow along with the local kids. And then pretty soon you become part of them. Back and of nice. other kids, other right. people in respect for, for their teach because they've been in it for yes. so long Absolutely. that you have to kind of have that. They feel you're part of them and then they're not going to say nothing. Sometimes when other people come into your territory and they become aggressive and they think that they're the locals, mm -hmm. which they're not, are the ones that create problems. Right. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Staying healthy, it takes effort. Yeah. It's not something that comes, we don't come out naturally doing exercise. It takes effort and effort means that you do a little bit more than you normally do. You right. just go above that and, and making an effort to, to if you want to lose weight, you gotta make an effort. If you want to be, say, if you're hard going, you gotta make an effort. In other words, you gotta work a little harder than what you normally do to get. Thank you very much, Sal, for joining me today on A Teaspoon of Healing. And so is there a website people could go to? Is it avilas.com? Yes, avilas.com. So they can see the menus they there. Family, and also we have an email blast that we can send out to people that didn't know what is going on. Okay. And everybody in the family has their own. We're very transparent. We want people to know the family and want people to see what we have. Okay. So go to avilaselranchito.com and you can follow them on, follow you guys on Instagram, right. like them on Facebook and get all the updates. That's right. Great. Well, thank you very much, Thank Sal. you for having me. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of A Teaspoon of Healing. If you have any questions for me or for Sal Avila, visit my website, teaspoonofhealing.com. Click on contact, fill out the form, and I'll get back to you. And if you're a current subscriber and you haven't left me a review on iTunes, please do so. I'd really love and appreciate that. While you're on my website, you can read my blog, download transcripts, listen to past shows, and find out more information about my services. Stay tuned next week for another episode. Thank you for listening to A Teaspoon of Healing with Dawn Damari your home for wellness and vibrant living. For more resources on wellness and vibrant living, visit us online at teaspoonofhealing.com. This podcast is for informational purposes only and does not constitute medical advice. Please consult a physician or other health professional before undertaking changes in lifestyle or wellness habits. The author claims no responsibility to any person or entity for any liability, loss, or damage caused or alleged to be caused directly or indirectly as a result of use, application, or interpretation of the information presented herein. 